This boat is not supposed to be in this shop anymore. I don't like that sound, boys. That's not good. Today, we're gonna take the engine apart on our budget boat and find out why it broke on us last weekend. On the last video you saw, we took the boat out to the lake for sea trials for the first time, and it only ran for an hour and a half before something catastrophic went wrong in the engine. And after we put $5,800 into this, that comes out to $3,866 per hour of usage we've got out of this boat, so that's pretty bad. And we read all the comments, so I know that we've gotta get this budget boat out of here so we can get back to work on the houseboat before you guys revolt. We'll start with the easy stuff first. So we'll take the wool filter off, cut it open, and if we've got metal debris in there, that'll kind of let us know for sure we've spun a bearing or torn something else up inside. What do you guys think we're gonna have in here? It's gonna be good or bad? Okay, oh, oh no, that doesn't look good. I mean, that was brand new oil. That's oil with an hour and a half of runtime on it. Here we go. Da, 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 da. All right, let's see what we got. Okay. Now what we're looking for is uh, metal. Oil looks horrible. Absolutely horrible. Pull some of the filter element out. Stretch her out. Let me try and get you guys in here pretty close. This is all I can find so far for metal shavings. Just a couple little pieces of shiny copper, which usually indicates a bearing. We gotta keep going, we gotta keep going further, which means, unfortunately, uh, engine's gotta come out. Think it's free? Maybe. Yeah, that's not too bad. It took about an hour to get the engine out and it's just me out here working tonight on it. So next, I wanna drain the oil and see what it looks like. Oh, it's not good looking oil. So there's no denying the oil looks bad, but I'm not seeing lots of metal particles. You know, every time I've blown a motor before, you know, you'll see lots of metal, shiny stuff, bearing material, piston material. It's just nasty looking oil. Okay, next quickest way on this engine, get the oil pan off. Ah. Here we go, get you guys in here. Oh, here's our bearing material. Shiny, shiny copper. Here's a big piece here. That's not good. The uh, oil pan is full of this kind of material. None of this is good. This is all bad. So having blown a few engines up, I think I know which rod bearing spun. So if you look up in there, number one has a different color on the end of the rod. Looks a little heated up, so that's probably the one. So I bet if we take that cap off first, we'll see that that bearing is destroyed. Oh yeah. Yeah. Here is the bottom shell of the rod bearing. It still has uh, most of its copper, but it's got some chunks taken out of it. And then here is the top shell of that bearing. Most of the copper's gone. This is all grooved up. I've come up with three options 
to get this boat back on the water. I'm gonna tell you the three, and then you guys can guess which one we're gonna pick. Okay, option one, we buy a brand new engine. So they still make this engine brand new from the factory, three year warranty. It's $7,500 though. Option two, we get on Craigslist, eBay, Facebook Marketplace, and we find another used engine, but then we might be getting someone else's problem engine, and it could last, you know, an hour and a half like this one just did. Okay, option three, we take the engine apart, we get the crankshaft out, and we take it to a machine shop, have them fix the crank. So out of those three, we're picking none of them. I had a new idea. Cost us maybe a hundred bucks, let me show you. Okay, so out here next to the houseboat, I've got tub storage here. And when we first got that budget boat, we took the old seized engine apart and stored all the parts in these tubs here. So first I thought, let's look at the old crankshaft. Maybe it's still good. Well, unfortunately this tub got a crack in it, filled with water and, um, yeah, the crankshaft out of the original engine, um, that's gone. And as a side note, for those of you following the houseboat build, the same thing happened to the tub holding the transmissions from the old houseboat. So that's that's not good. We were thinking about getting new transmissions anyway. Uh, this might have sped up that uh, option. However, this tub up here did not fill with water and it's got the rest of the engine parts in here, including some very rusty pistons, however, We've got rod bearings on them. This one looks the best. Piston is rusted to all hell, but the rod bearing looks pretty good. We're gonna steal the rod bearing out of this one. I've already got some emery cloth, different grits. We're gonna sand down that journal on the crank, throw an old rod bearing in, and we're gonna be back up and running, maybe. And in theory, all it should cost us is an oil pan gasket because in my haste ripping the oil pan off yesterday, I tore the oil pan gasket. Before we do this though, disclaimer, bars and tone, beep, beep. This is not good engine advice. If this was your boat, you should probably take the time to take the crank out, let a machine shop fix it up. I think that's really your best budget option. But if you're a redneck and you're cheap, and you wanna sand your crank down, definitely do it. So now for the rest of this video, you get to see if we can make this engine run again. So I'm gonna start with a shoe because I need the shoelaces out of it because they're flat. You know, you can feel all these grooves with your fingernail. I'm gonna start with 150 grit. This is one of the cheapo Amazon emery cloth packs. And I've got some normal sandpaper. We'll go 1500, 3000, and then we'll throw some metal polish at it. See what we can get. I'm gonna throw some of this layout fluid that I'll use sometimes when we're machining stuff. Maybe that'll let us see our progress here. Start with the 150 grit, wrap it around, piece of tape, shoelace, wrap it around. Yeah, so just from doing that, you can see that blue dye is still down in the grooves. So we're gonna need a couple more passes with the 150. Okay, so I hyperlapsed through most of that, but that was about an hour of going through all the different emery cloths, sometimes a couple passes, and this is not too bad. So I can still fill a few of these grooves with my fingernail, but just barely. It doesn't look too bad after we're done, but now we've got to measure how much material we took off. So the before measurement that we had was 2.0916. See what we get. But there's our first one. Let's see what we're at. I'm getting 2.0901. It was 2.0916 before. We only took uh, 15, 10 thousandths so. off. Now to find out what the clearance is on this, we'll take the bearing that we're gonna use. We're gonna get the Plasti Gauge, which is just a plastic filament that gets squished in. I'll show you how it works. Yeah, buddy. Used bearings. Uh, it doesn't get more budget than this, man. It's just plastic filament. Rod bearing clearance from seven ten thousandths to 28. Allowable up to four thousandths. What do you guys think we're gonna get? It's obviously 
not on the good side. We're more down towards the 3000s here. And as we go over to the left, it's a little less. So that's more towards 4000s, but this is as much as we can measure with this plastic gauge. You know, we're gonna throw it together and see what we get. On the last video, you guys might remember, it was dripping water into the bilge. Steady drip. Steady drip. And you can see the engine block is cracked. And someone in the past apparently used JB Weld to go over the top of it. It looks like this thing obviously cracked the entire way across and someone attempted to weld it back up. Looks like someone welded it with a damn arc welder. There's just blobs of crap everywhere on this thing. <laughs> I picked the worst Craigslist engine possible. I've had pretty good luck with Craigslist engines and cars and boats and stuff, but this, this is not good. Uh, where is it at? That's copper, silicon bronze. Here's one option. We could try that. Try bronze this up, then maybe JB weld back over the top. What's the worst that could happen, all right? No. 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 The hell is that? DC shocked the out of me. Keeping the heat down. Threw a blob of this silicon bronze on here. It doesn't look that good. I'm not winning any welding awards with that. Oh, JB Weld. Never let you down. Hey. Sorry, Jimmy. All right, it's time to get this in and fire this thing up. See if it works. I was gonna tell you guys a little story. So JT, who you guys have seen in many other of the Motivate Labs videos, he actually fixed an engine on his truck in high school. So he had a 1991 Isuzu pickup, little bitty four cylinder, and it spun two bearings. He sanded them down, put some replacement bearings in, and then he daily drove the thing and it worked fine. So in that case, I would argue that was the right way to fix that engine. Now, if it didn't work and it blew up the next day, then that would not have been the right way to fix that engine. So sometimes it's about the result more than the method that we used to get there, right? If it blows up in 10 minutes when we run it out in the driveway, then you guys can tell me that this was the wrong way to fix it, and I'll be okay with that. All right, guys, let's turn the water on. <laughs> Try to start this thing up. Okay, main battery on. Fire extinguisher if we need it. Let's give her a couple pumps here. Yep, fuel's coming out, that's good. Let's trim down. Ticket noise I don't like. 
Right, guys i'm sure you could hear it on the video but the ticking came right back and it turned into a knocking and it's coming and going so i think we re-destroyed a bearing or two you know my speech earlier about the right way to do things and the wrong way well this ended up being the wrong way to do it so you know it worked for jt back in high school he fixed that little azuzu four cylinder and daily drove it after that you know it was worth a shot for 100 bucks maybe this is my sign to work on the houseboat but it's 101 degrees here in texas so it's a uh, heat stroke territory to be working on fiberglass in the day and the other thing is i'm boatless at the moment so part of this being the budget boat fixing it up was so that i had a boat again in the water and uh, now i'm dry docked guys i'm landlocked so gonna have to figure something out we appreciate you guys watching we'll see what happens with this thing we'll see y'all next time